Arthur, how, how do you plan to approach Marcus and Desmond over the next two and a half weeks? You know, like, how, right now, how, how, how you awesome? handle reps, how you handle kind of working both of them through as you figure all this out? Well, it's a lot of guys. I mean, this is, we, we've, and I've said this on the record before, and what you'll see out today, this is an OTA. This isn't a practice. This is a, an organized team activity, which is a workout, and there's rules and talking about being smart, player safety. That's why you're not going to see full team, you're not going to see the big guys. You're, there's not going to be contact. It's not what we want right now this time of year. A lot of individual development. You'll see in individual periods. You'll see some seven on seven. But this is a buildup. When we start camp, then it's competitive and it's real football. So there's a, all the rookies, Mike. There's the quarterbacks, wide receivers, backs, DBs. There's a progression. So it's a teaching development and a lot of a passing. But again, you're talking about seven on seven. There's no rush. Trying to get the timing down. So again, you know, people love the hot takes. So right now, you're watching a scripted seven on seven. And when it comes to Isaiah Oliver, do you feel like he'll be, at what point do you feel like he's going to be ready? Who? Isaiah Oliver. Don't have timelines on the injuries. That was, that was a D-leg question. Yeah, it was a D-leg question. Isaiah's right? doing a good job. He's progressing. And it's just not fair to the player to put a timeline on it. But uh, there's nobody that's working harder than Isaiah Oliver. He's in the building. we will pop in there sometimes at 8 o'clock at night, and he's in there working. So, Let, let me rephrase that. Thing. What did you see in him, even though he got hurt, that you wanted to bring him back? Yeah, really uh, intelligent football player. Embraced that role of playing that slot corner, that nickel position. Um, you know, he can play on the outside if he needs to. He can drop deep if he has to. So he's a, And he's a good pressure player when uh, Dean dials up you know, the pressure with the slot corners. Coach, what do you uh, expect to see from your wide receivers? You have a number of wide receivers that you brought in from this time in OTAs, and what would, are some of the things you'll be looking for as far as them to separate themselves as you guys ramp up towards yeah, training? Yeah, you really camp? won't see anybody separate themselves now, but you're getting guys in here who are a little heavier on the skill positions. Some guys, as we you know, make decisions, that we'll have some trial players at veteran minicamp, and then we'll, we'll probably end up adding to the lines to balance it out going into training camp. Uh, but you get a couple week evaluation with guys, how they're, how they're picking up the offense, you know, how, how they mesh in with the quarterback, the timing, understanding conceptually what to do, and really what are their work habits on the field and in, and in the, the classroom. We hear so much about the jump from year one to year two for guys. For a guy like Kyle Pitts, what have you seen from him already in year two, a second off season that's a promising? Well, you, He's not facing the unknown, right? But all, with all these rookies, everything's new to him. New environment, new team, staff, terminology. Uh, you see Kyle, as, as he, you saw him as he progressed through last season, and I've said it many times, he's just scratching the surface. You see a very different player mindset. He knows what to expect, what we expect on him, uh, expect from him. So I've been really encouraged so far. With your defensive personnel additions, how much differently do you think you'll be able to play on that side of the ball? I'm sorry, Josh. I didn't hear the last part of that. How much differently do you think you'll be able to play on that side of the ball this year just because of personnel additions? Yeah, I think you'll see, you know, Dean, and he, he's gone on record, you know, he'll be able to put more, especially in year two, even the guys coming back, they're familiar with what we're asking them to do. There's different packages. We, you know, we should be more multiple with some of the guys if, if they continue to progress, we think. Some of these young guys we brought in and some of the guys we signed give you a lot of flexibility, whether it's on the back end with the depth we feel like we'll have at safety or really up front with a lot of those young guys at that DN outside linebacker spot so, and at inside linebacker. So it'll be a fun group to coach and uh, be able to open up a lot more of the playbook. Several of his, his players have talked about aggressiveness, his aggressiveness as a play caller. Does that just mean getting after the quarterback, or are there other elements involved in being aggressive defensively? Well, it's all over the place. You know, a lot of it, too, is you can come up with great pressures, whether you're, you know, you're, you're in obvious pass situations or you're in red zone, the thought behind it, what you're trying to accomplish, getting the ball out, understanding also aggressive coverage behind it, knowing the situation as well, Josh. You know, it's not just the blitzing, the, the pressure from up front, but on the back end, understanding situationally how to close the cushions where you fit in the space and stuff like that. So, and that's where it comes with year two, better understanding some of the competition I think will bring that out. And I think we'll have better execution. 
So coach, recently Anthony Ferkser talked about just being in that tight end room with someone like Kyle Pitts and just the competitiveness. I know it's very early on, but what are you starting to see in that tight end room as it just kind of flows out and the competitiveness in that room? Well, you certainly, I think, with guys that are in that room, and it's, it's not just Kyle. Justin Peel does a great job coaching that room. It's a different room than it was a year ago. We'll be able to do a lot, and you know, just by personnel. I mean, we had Lee in there last year, who was at the end of his career, who I think I'm faster than. Um, Hayden was a different type player. And then now you got other guys in there. Parker Hussey's a guy that's really developed, that I expect a lot of growth from from here. Uh, well, Parker's been in the league for a couple years, but he was a converted defensive end from Iowa. And then Anthony Ferkser is a guy I've worked with before. He's another, gives you a different element in the passing game. Guys has made big plays in big games and playoff games before. And um, Braden Linnaeus is a guy that we're going to develop that's been from the CFL. It's got unique uh, pass catching traits. And then obviously the rookie, John Fitzpatrick, will bring him along coming off the foot injury. Hopefully we'll see more of him in, in camp. And then Tucker Fisk was a guy we brought into rookie minicamp. So that room is unique. It's different than it was a year ago. Uh, so I'm excited. And Coach, I'm going to ask you a non-football question. Sure. Um, my name's Tanitra Batiste. I should probably I tell you that. Yeah. Oh, you do? Okay, because I'm like, you didn't call me a name. So I should probably reintroduce myself. But I'm with 92.9 The Game, I'm but sorry, also I, I Locked I couldn't hear so a lot of it, yes. Gotcha. And this morning on one of our shows, they talked about the fact that they saw you kind of doing your rounds, getting your cardio going. So I was curious, what is it that you listen to? What were you listening to in your pods that kind of gets you going and ready for something like open practice today? Oh, yeah. I, I didn't know. I thought I was here before anybody was. I wasn't trying to look for attention. I look like the uh, cool guy coach working out. Need to stay in shape or get in better shape, put it that way. You know, we ask the players too. But it's good. It, it kind of recharges you. I, you know, what, whatever your routine is. I, I have an eclectic music taste. Sometimes I listen to podcasts, uh, audio books. I got a pretty good commute into work. So it's, I just change it up. Coach, how you doing? Uh, year two for you, but a lot of new personnel, a lot of new faces out there, and only a few days on the field, no contact going on. What's your timetable, and what do you look for to let you know that things are on schedule? Yeah, a lot of times, too, we're installing new stuff every day. So a lot of the stuff you see today will be the first time for the young guys that they've run those certain concepts offensively or a new call we put in defensively. So it's a teaching and development stage where a lot of the stuff you see, it's like, can we bring the installations in the classroom that we've shown film on, can we bring them to life? And you wanna get, it, get as many reps as you can with those calls and the adjustments, so when you come back again in camp, you feel like you're ahead there, and you kind of, you reinstall it, and then now you're, like I, like I said, you're really competitive and real football then. So, with well, some guys, some guys pick up things quicker than others, doesn't mean we're going to write somebody off this time of year because of it, but it allows you to assess, assess where they're at mentally and uh, as well as physically. Last time we talked to you, you said that reuniting with Marcus was fun. Why is he somebody that you like to coach? Well, he's just a great person to be around. Um, you take the football side of it, and there's, there's, we all know people, friends and co-workers that but, and you enjoy being around. They make coming to work fun. I mean, he, he's a unique person. And uh, that's why you always hear teammates that play with him, whether it was at Oregon, Tennessee, or in Vegas, even the short time here, why they appreciate him. He's an authentic person. Uh, I don't know many people I've met in my life that are better humans than Marcus Mariota. The last time that we talked to Brian Edwards, he made the comment that he thought that coming to Atlanta was a good fit, as good as it could get for him. Why was Brian somebody that y'all wanted to go after? Well, we thought the opportunity was there, and you, you hope it's a win-win. It's a new program they're building in Vegas, and I got a lot of uh, respect for Dave Ziegler and, and Josh McDaniels, and, and sometimes it's a really good player, and they may be going in a different direction. Schematically, he may fit more of us. What we're trying to do, uh, he's relatively local, Played at University of South Carolina, he's from Conway, South Carolina, so he's familiar with this area, which is, which is unique. It's not why we traded for him. But there's some skill sets that, that I saw for him when he was coming out of South Carolina that I thought would fit, and there's a role for him here. So when Terry brings up, brings up the trade and we talk about it as a staff, uh, we thought it was an exciting move for us because he really fits what we're trying to build in that receiver room mentally, the maturity, the competitiveness, 
Uh, obviously, the guy can play. Got a good catch radius. So we're excited about him. Coach, you talked about uh, fear of the unknown or as far as Kyle Pitts and what's the, the difference between year one and year two. Like, what if what feels different for you going from year one, coming in from yeah. your first year and then coming yeah. into your second yeah, year? Certainly, yeah, certainly. I was a, a rookie head coach last year, so uh, like we challenge our, our players and staff, and I start with myself. How can I improve day to day, year after year? So there's certainly things that you can get, you feel you can get accomplished. That it's every day. I mean, it, you would blink and it felt like it was 10 o'clock at night. There's so much you want to get done, and what's practical, what's not. Uh, you feel like you're hitting your stride better, and, and um, certainly more comfortable for me year two as well. Last question though: Do you have the hat in a size eight? What's that? Did you have a, a, a hat in a size eight? I need an eight. Oh, you need you an got, eight? Yeah, I need uh, an eight. I'd love to talk to Brian Boynier or Kenny. <laughs> I'm sure they can work something out. <laughs> Appreciate it, Coach. Ha has your philosophy about running the quarterback changed since you became an NFL coach? Well, I just, uh, just... Yeah, I mean, I would. that's probably fair. I mean, you know, I go back and... I think about the first couple quarterbacks, I was a defensive quad of control, but we had Jason Campbell, Mark Brunel, Todd Collins. Uh, now Mark was a guy that, you know, early in his career, you had extended plays in Jacksonville, but people weren't running a lot of the zone read, like quarterback run stuff. They were running, that was kind of taking over college football in the early 2000s. Uh, it's certainly made its way into the NFL, and there's a fine line. I mean, you don't want to be reckless with it, but I think there's a natural progression that's happened, and we, we have some very athletic quarterbacks. So we're going to try to play to our strengths. Did, did you – how much of it was the type of players you started getting at that position that made you reevaluate? Yeah, I think that's a lot. I mean, I think with the talent pool coming in, I mean, I, I mean, you can either complain about it or the reality are there's a lot of guys that are very versatile football players, whether they come from 707 backgrounds and they got – you know, it's, it's a different game structurally sometimes on the back end, the type of athlete that's coming into the league – you're seeing that, certainly what we did with Cordero Patterson. Obviously what San Francisco did middle to late year with Debo Samuel, that got a lot of notoriety, that people have had success with guys, but, but they're used to playing other positions. They weren't just stuck at tailback from the time they were nine. They played wide open offenses, defense. You have hybrid safeties that come in. Are they corners? Are they the big sub linebackers? You know, so it's, that's what the talent pool that's coming into this game. And you better adapt. Now, some old principles still hold true in the game of football, but and, and the same thing with the quarterback, a little bit different in college, um, the speed of the game, you got to be careful how many times you run a certain player. You don't want to expose them too many times because they're fair game when they're running in between in the hashes. Yeah. Uh yeah, what does uh, what does Marlon Davidson need to do to kind of take that next step as a player? Well, you know, what what have you been looking for out of him? Well, all those guys, um, no different. When we ask Grady to replicate what he's done in the past. Can he, can we continue to enhance Grady? Can we find other guys that can come in there and give us some internal pressure? So it's not just Marlon; it's the whole group. And then there'll be opportunity everywhere. And, and like I said, we may have to get uh, flexible about different packages, which. Dean and, and Ted and Gary have done in the past and Frank so um, we're excited all these guys have an opportunity and Marlon knows what the expectation is just as TQ Cram does or, or Nick Thurman but the opportunity is there we got to find more internal pass rush hey Arthur you, you keep bringing in a bunch more wide receivers you signed another one this week is there something that you're looking for when it comes to receivers that you feel like you need in that room uh, not necessarily. We, we we see there's good football players out there. Maybe somebody, obviously I have a history of some of the guys or somebody on our staff does, personnel or coaching. We want to enhance that room. And if we think there's a guy out there that could possibly make, make this team and make our room better, we're going to bring him in. And in this kind of year, because we don't have to, you know, line up and play a real game, you, you may go heavy. And it's extended two, three-week tryout for certain guys at certain skill positions. And... Uh, we're excited. So when the opportunity to bring somebody like Cameron Batson in, who's who's played in this league, who I've got a lot of respect for, he's coming off an injury and he's out there, and we were able to the first team to work him out, you want to bring him along and see if we can enhance that room. The competition will only make us better. And just from a clerical standpoint, anyone not going to be here today that was here last week and vice versa? 
I'm most of our guys are here. I mean, I got. Uh, I gave the update recently. You know, there's guys at different parts of the program in the off season. Some stuff was cleaned up. Some guys are vets are dealing with some family thing, but we've had probably about 95% of our guys almost every day.